<laughs> What's up, nerds? Or in this case, weebs. Mm -hmm. I'm James. I'm still Kyle. He is still Kyle. I Currently unchanged. Right. And uh, today we're going to be talking about live action anime adaptations and how they've been great. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off with. Our favorite of our live action uh, adaptations, Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> was it really like the first? I think it was one of the first ones to come out, though, right? It was one of the first, definitely one of the first American yeah. adaptations, which I guess is what we're talking about right, right. now. It was god awful. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Not, not a single frame of that film is worth watching. No. I would honestly rather, what's that like really, really awful film that everyone makes fun of? The Room? Yeah, I'd rather watch that a thousand times. <laughs> At least that's funny. Yeah. Like, that's funny. There's nothing enjoyable about Dragon Ball Evolutions. And then you go from there. I think the next one to come out was, did they do Death Note next? Or was... Oh, God, not the Death Note one. Yeah. <gasps> Death Note was not good either. Death Note, they had... Um... There's a couple in between, too. There's a Attack I know they on had Titan an... one, too. Did they? Yeah. I didn't know about that one. I know they had an Avatar one for like last Air Airbender that was god awful. I know there was a Full Metal Alchemist you don't bring, one that was also bad. You don't bring up the last Airbender. Hey, in these parts, okay. we don't we don't bring up evolution, and yet here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything is fair. Nothing any longer is forbidden. Nothing. Facts. Okay. Um, so moral of the story. Yeah. Um, what do you think that all of these terrible adaptations got wrong? That made them so terrible to begin with and with that being said what did one piece do right to get everyone excited about it the way i see it the biggest thing is that they misunderstood the source material okay. they tried to take something that is inherently based and drenched in japanese culture and then tried to air dry it in american culture it's like that doesn't work you right. don't take something goofy like anime and then immediately make it serious like american productions it's like Dragon Ball, as much as it is a serious thing, is still goofy. It's still mm -hmm. slapstick in several scenarios. So you can't just Americanize it and expect it to land. Yeah, I don't even think I would want to see another live action attempt. I would rather them do like a really high like animation than uh, them to try to even attempt yeah. to do a live action. Just because Dragon Ball is a lot. And it is. Not that to say that One Piece isn't. It's less, well, I guess in the later bits it gets pretty crazy too. <laughs> but I'm interested to see what they'll do with the next seasons of One Piece because like, it's either going to have the craziest CGI budget of all time yeah. or it's going to look bad. <laughs> <laughs> but with yeah. Dragon Ball, um, what I was getting at is when you go to do something like that, I don't even feel like those characters, they're larger than life. Like you Very have to really so. like get some like six, nine people to play all these characters. Like you've got all these, like and there's gotta, so many different ones. They got to embrace the acting tenfold. Mm -hmm. They got to be willing to do the, it's over 9,000 yeah. and like deliver it with sincerity. Mm -hmm. It's another one that really disappointed me was the Cowboy Bebop adaptation mm -hmm. because it misunderstood Bebop. Cowboy Bebop is not your typical goofy beat em up anime. It's a very dark mm -hmm. understanding of what happens when you let your past affect you and you cannot move forward. And it results in the death of the main character because he refused to essentially deal with and move on from his past. The, the adaptation was just, haha, funny people beating up bad guys. It's like, that's not Bebop. Yeah, and one of the cool things that Corridor Digital did, I don't know if you've ever seen them react to that side-by-side. -side. Uh, there's like a really like nice one in the anime, right? Where it's like this one fight scene that's really like a one-shot, one-frame, shows like the pacing and story of everything is like so perfect in the anime. And then they do, they show like the live action one and there's like 30 cuts before it even like gets into yeah, the fight. I was going to say. It's, it's unreal to the point of the filmmaking is like the point of doing the one or here was to show like the pace and the emotion and like how this like matters instead of just cutting in and around the fight and not, you're just fighting to fight at that point. You're not really, yeah. 
spending time on the character development that can happen during a fight, which a lot of people don't even understand when you're watching Marvel movies or watching things that have a thousand cuts per fight. When you're telling a story with a fight, like I always point out the Naruto versus Sasuke fight, like that fight tells a story and it bridges all of the gaps of the story between Naruto and Sasuke. And it's no sound, no anything. It's just the emotion telling the story. And that's something that I don't believe live action has been able to master in any way, shape, or form. Very much so. The brilliance of the Cowboy Bebop fights, they are, first of all, incredibly well animated. Like, there's anime fights, and then there's Cowboy Bebop fights. And Cowboy Bebop fights are beautifully executed in both choreography and animation. But like you said, with the longer shots, it's meant to show us Spike's character as a risk taker. Because the longer a shot goes on with a fight, the longer you have a one-shot in a fight, the more suspenseful it becomes. Cuts break that suspense by showing us different angles and therefore immediately changing the perspective of the fight. If you have one long shot of a fight that's just forward as they move forward, there's huge suspense in that because you mm -hmm. literally don't have enough perspective to know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And it's it speaks to... Uh, ooh. That was going to be a really weird sentence. It speaks to Spike's character as a risk taker and someone who feels like he's only alive when he's on the verge of death. The, the adaptation, again, too many cuts to even remotely communicate that. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest things about anime versus live action that I've only seen a few different animes try to get right or adaptations get right is what... Um, I don't know if you, I'll, I'll say it like this, impact frames, yes. right? Yes. So impact frames are basically when you are seeing someone like, you know, queue up for a punch or whatever. And when it hits, you almost see like a cut to black first. And it's like a one like frame, but it's like a cut to black to showcase that impact. And then it almost looks like a flash in the 20, 30 frames a second it is. But these frames are very integral to showcasing like this had impact, whether it's jumping or movement or uh, fights, these frames are very important. And there's only a handful of live action ad adaptations that have even tried to do that. And it's that's hard on its own because it's like animation. You can break the laws of physics to make something work. Look at smear frames. Look yeah. at character warping and model warping and mm -hmm. like you said impact frames there's a great scene in Gurren Lagann where Kamina punches Simone and if you watch it frame by frame the laws of physics do not apply at all Simone's face becomes the equivalent of a rubber ball but it's you can break the physics and make much more impact in that frame it's not easy to do that in live action mm -hmm. but at the same time that's where I feel like a lot of these a good amount of these adaptations are just cash grabs because they're not willing to put in the effort to show those impact frames. Mm -hmm. I, as someone who would love to adapt like any anime under the sun, if I were given the chance to play with like an impact frame in live action, I would so just take a picture of like a shot where it's just a punch connecting and like see how much I could play with that to make an impact frame. Mm -hmm. And I think that alone speaks for my biggest concern with the success of One Piece is now you're going to have all of these studios going out to try to get as many licenses as they can for animes that haven't been done just to run a thousand of them through Netflix's door and they'll just keep signing them that like and I don't think that the same love and care is going to be there the reason why the One Piece anime worked is because Oda was involved Yes. And Oda really wanted this to be successful. And he went out of his way to find his perfect Luffy, his perfect cast that truly made this work. And without that love and care, you're just making another movie and you're just wasting a bunch of money. And now we have a thousand terrible live action anime adaptations and one good one, which is still <laughs> One Piece. Which is unfortunate because there's so many other incredible anime that deserve mm -hmm. the love and respect when being brought to live action. But it's terrifying to think that we will have those adaptations that are garbage. However, from the director of Cowboy Bebop himself, at least the garbage quality of the adaptation has made the original series all the better. 
<laughs> there it is. I like that.